All right. Today we're going to interview a person. Can you speak into this microphone? Okay. What grade are you in? Kindergarten. What was that? Kindergarten. Kindergarten. What if I told you, Ella? By the way, this is Ella, everybody. What if I told you that you're never allowed to leave kindergarten and you can't ever go to first grade? You have to stay in kindergarten the rest of your life. How would you feel about that? You wouldn't like it? Do you want to go to first grade and second grade and third grade and grow up and get a job and have a family? Do you want those things? Yeah? You wouldn't like to stay in kindergarten for the rest of your life? No? You wouldn't? You would? You wouldn't? <laughs> you want to grow up? What do you want to be when you grow up? Um, I don't know. Yeah, you do. You tell us all the time. What do you want to be when you grow up? You don't know? Okay. She doesn't know. She's got a lot of time to pick. Okay. So you're telling me that you wouldn't want to stay in kindergarten the rest of your life. You want to grow up and be a big girl and go to first grade, right? Right. Okay. All right. That's all I needed to know. Thank you. You can go sit down. She didn't know that was going to happen. <laughs> uh, I, I sprung that one, one on her. Uh, so... That is uh, an extreme example, but I, I would imagine that most kids want to grow up. They want to get older. They want to move on to first grade and second grade and third grade and, and eventually go to high school and then uh, go to college. And then once you're out of college and you have to get a job, then you want to go back and be a kindergartner, right? Okay? And take naps, and what well, she doesn't take naps, that's pre, pre K, but uh, you want to take naps and uh, you want to have no responsibilities. Uh, that, would be, that would be nice, but uh, when we're young, we want to, to grow. We want to progress. We want to, to get older and get better and do more. Um, but unfortunately, when it comes to being a Christian, Spiritually speaking, unfortunately, sometimes, sometimes we don't want to grow. We don't want to mature. We don't want to grow up. And that's kind of what we've been talking about for the last eight weeks. Today is part eight of our sermon series of Back to Elementary. And today I want us to talk about going on to maturity, about growing up. We've discussed those elementary principles from Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, those, those beginning principles that we all have to have. Okay, we've, we've discussed those for a few weeks, and, and, and now we need to talk about moving on to maturity, about graduating from kindergarten, about growing up and moving on to something a little more difficult, something a little bigger. And so... To, to sort of conclude this series, I want to ask you this question. Have you finished elementary? Have you finished elementary? Not literally elementary in, in the school system, but have you finished elementary in the sense of have you done and understood the elementary doctrines that we've been talking about for the last eight weeks in Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 and 2? I hope you'll grab your Bibles and turn over there. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. Uh, just real quick, let's back up to chapter 5, verse 11. Back up to chapter 5, verse 11. And, and I want us to, to read this, this whole thought that the Hebrews writer has here. About this, he's talking about uh, the high priesthood of Jesus, which is a very complicated subject. Okay. He says, about this we have much to say, and it is hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the basic principles of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food. 
For everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness since he is a child, but solid food is for the mature. For those who have, have uh, their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. Moving on to chapter 6, verse 1. Therefore, let us leave the elementary doctrine of Christ and go on to maturity. Not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God and of instruction about washings and the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. Move, move forward, the Hebrews writer says. And so that's what we want. I want you to graduate from kindergarten. I don't want you to stay in kindergarten forever. And most of you already have done that. But, but from time to time, we have to go back and look at those, those elementary principles, those basic principles. We have to go back and look at those because sometimes we're not ready for meat. Sometimes we're still in elementary. Sometimes we still need milk. And so my question to you this morning is, have you finished elementary? Have you done, believed, understood those things in Hebrews 6, 1 and 2? Have you come to faith in God? Do you believe God's good news, His gospel? Have you heard it and have you believed it? Have you put your trust in Him to walk in His ways and to be rewarded by Him? Have you put your faith in God? If you've put your faith in God, then, then it's time for you to make a change, to repent. Have you repented? Have you, uh, because of this faith that you have in God, have you, have you thought in your mind, you know what, I need to make a change. I need to, to live differently. I need to have a different life. I need to live a way different from what I have been living because that's on a path. That's the wrong path. Have you made that decision to move toward Christ? Repentance. And then he says, teachings about washings. Teachings about washings. And, and we discussed that that uh, most likely has reference to baptism and, and he's connecting it to the Old Testament practice of, of ritual washings, of, of doing these washings so that one can be pure to come into God's presence. And, and the, that principle is translated over into the new covenant, into uh, Christ's kingdom. Have you been washed? Have you been baptized? Have you followed that ritual of baptism? And, and, and are you coming into God's presence? Have you done that? Have you done that? Friends, if you haven't done that, then you're still in kindergarten. Or maybe you're not ready to move on to maturity. And then we talked about the laying on of hands, the laying on of hands in chapter 6. And, and we talked about how the, the laying on of hands throughout the Bible was to either bless someone or to send someone. To bless someone or send someone. Have you received the blessing of God's salvation by someone taking their hands on you and baptizing you into Christ? Have you realized that you are, are on mission for Christ? You have been sent by God to be on mission, to be a servant in God's kingdom? Do you have things that you need to be doing in the name of Jesus? Have you realized that, that you are on mission and then do you have a strong belief in the resurrection and the fact that this is not the end? And the fact that this is only the beginning and that God will raise the dead to a life with Him or a life without Him? Have you realized that this is not the end? That it's not just about the few years that we spend on this earth. It goes beyond that. Do you believe in the resurrection and have that hope for your life? And then we talked last week about judgment. Do you believe that there will be a judgment and that you will be judged for the things that you've done in your life? And that basically, whether you are an enemy of God or a friend of God depends, is, is, will decide how you will be judged. If you're an enemy of God, he'll throw the book at you. 
If you're a friend of God, there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. The judgment. Have you finished elementary? Have you done those things? Do you understand those things? If so, if so, you have become enlightened. I want you to notice chapter 6, verses 4 and 5. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 4 and 5. It says, For it is impossible in the case of those who have once been enlightened, you've been enlightened, who have tasted of the heavenly gift, have shared in the Holy Spirit, have tasted the, God, the goodness of the Word of God and the powers of the age to come. If you have graduated elementary, if you've done those things, if you believe those things, if those things are a part of your life, then you have become enlightened. You have tasted of the heavenly gift. You have shared in the Holy Spirit. You have tasted of the Word of God and of the powers of the age to come you realize that God is doing something in you if you've done those things. If you haven't experienced those things, then maybe you haven't graduated elementary. But I want you to know it's time for us to move on from elementary and grow into maturity. We can't stay in kindergarten. We can't stay and keep rehashing these elementary doctrines, the faith and the repentance and the baptism and and the mission and and the resurrection of God and and, and, and eternal judgment. We can't stay and keep rehashing those things. We've got to move on. We've got to, to grow. We've got to progress. I want us all to move on to maturity in Christ, not stay a kindergartner. We want... To grow. And so it's time for us to grow into maturity. So I want us to look, with the time that we have left, I want us to look at what it means from the book of Hebrews, from these passages that we've been looking at for the last several weeks. I want us to look at what it means to be mature in Christ. What is a, uh, what, what does a, a mature Christian, someone who's moved to meat, who's moved from just milk to meat, what does that person look like? What does that person do? And so I want us to back up to Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11. And I want us to notice in the first place that mature Christians teach others. Mature Christians teach others. Verse 11, about this we have much to say and it is hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, but you need someone to teach you again the basic principles of the oracles of God. You need milk and not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness since he is a child. A mark of a mature Christian Someone who's moving on from elementary and going on to maturity and growing up in Christ. A mark of that person is that they teach others. That doesn't necessarily mean you teach Bible class at church, but you're teaching others. You're teaching uh, your friends, you're teaching your loved ones, you're teaching your kids. Uh, You are talking to other people and having gospel conversations with other people. You have conversations with people about Jesus. Simply put, that's the, that is the, the, the ba- most basic form of teaching others. You talk about Jesus with other people. Friends, if you don't do that because, you know, it's weird or, uh, or you're afraid or you just don't think about it, if you don't have gospel conversations, if you're not teaching others, it's time to move on to maturity. Mature Christians teach others just the case. That's what the text says. So I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to to move from milk and go on to meat and and, and start, begin teaching others. Begin talking about Jesus to others. Talk to them, talk to your kids about Jesus, your grandkids about Jesus. Uh, Volunteer to teach a class here at the church. Do something that teaches others about Jesus. Move on to maturity. Whether that, I don't know, Maybe you're a Facebook person and you want to do it through Facebook. Or uh, maybe, 
maybe you, can, you, you have the ability to talk to other people. Maybe you want to teach a Bible class here. I don't know what that looks like, but it needs to happen if we're going to move on to maturity. And if we can't do that, I guess we've got to go back to those elementary principles. Maybe we've missed one of those elementary principles. Maybe we don't really truly have faith in God. We don't really truly have spiritual eyes for God and see that, believe that God, what God has done for us and what God can do in us. Maybe we haven't really repented and changed our lives and turned toward God. Maybe... We haven't been baptized and received God's Spirit. Maybe, maybe we haven't taken the, seriously the mission of God. Maybe that's the case. We have to move on to maturity, and that means teaching others. Number two, number two, we're going to find this in verse 14 of Hebrews chapter 5. Mature Christians train themselves to discern good from evil. Mature Christians train themselves to discern good from evil. Look at verse 14. But solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. Mature Christians learn to train themselves to discern good from evil. It's no longer just living whatever way we want to live. Mature Christians decide, make the decision to live for Jesus and live the way Jesus designed us to live. To determine good from evil. That's what mature Christians do. And we train ourselves to do it. It's not just something that we can wake up tomorrow and say, oh, you know what, I'm going to be just great at discerning good from evil and, and, and I'm just going to wake up tomorrow and be a good person. It takes training. It takes work. It takes practice. It takes becoming so, becoming, having that so ingrained in your life that you do it without even thinking about it. How many of you have to actively wake up and think, hey, I need to brush my teeth in the morning? Or how many of you just wake up and do it because that's what you've done every day? That's just what you do because you've created that habit. We need to create the habit of knowing good from evil, of doing what's right. So I have have created the habit of of loving my neighbor, of, of loving my neighbor so that whenever the question arises, what would Jesus do in this situation? I don't even have to think about it. I just do it because I've trained myself to do that. I know that, that, that it, it's, it's, it's wrong to be a, a punk to my wife, okay? I know it's wrong. I know it's wrong to be a punk to my wife. And I should get to the point, as a mature Christian, I should get to the point where I don't have to think, hey, maybe I shouldn't be a punk to my wife today. Maybe I should be kind and gentle and understanding. It should just happen. Unfortunately, that doesn't happen for me all the time. <laughs> I'm a punk to my wife a lot. Okay? I've got some maturing to do. We all do. But this is the mark of a mature Christian. We're working on it. We're training ourselves. It's no longer just, I live whatever way I want to. I do whatever I want. No. Mature Christians train themselves to discern, to discern good from evil. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14. And if we, if we can't do that, then we've missed something in those elementary doctrines, that foundation. We've missed something. Like we said, maybe, we don't, maybe I don't believe that there is a resurrection and I don't believe that this life really just matters. I'm just going to live 70 years and that's it. And, and that's, that's it. I'm dead all over like Rover. And it doesn't matter. Maybe, maybe I wouldn't say that out loud, but maybe that's what I believe in my mind. And so I'm never moved to do anything. If we're missing that, it may be that we've got to go back to those elementary doctrines. Number three, mature Christians are earnest in their faith. Mature Christians are earnest in their faith. That, those are, that's a, earnest isn't a word that we use a whole lot today. Uh, but what, 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 what it means, what I mean by that is that we are, to, to put this uh, in a way that you may understand, we are 
on fire about our faith. It's something we think about. It's something that we put energy into. It's something that we have on our minds. Mature Christians are earnest in their faith. I want you to look at Hebrews 6, verses 9 through 12. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 9 through 12. The Hebrews writer says, Though we speak in this way, yet in your case, the people to whom he's writing, beloved, we feel sure of better things. Things that belong to salvation. For God is not unjust so as to overlook your work and the love that you have shown for his name in serving the saints, as you still do. And we desire each one of you to show the same earnestness to have the full assurance of hope until the end, so that you may not be sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Mature Christians take it seriously. Their Christianity, their faith in God is not on the back burner. It's not, it's not third or fourth or fifth uh, in a line of priorities. It's, it is the priority, and everything else falls underneath it. They're earnest in their faith, on fire, ready to go, zealous for good works, serious about it. Friends, that's what mature Christians do. And and, and if, if, if we stop doing that or we fail to do that, it might be time for us to go back, to look at those elementary doctrines. Where am I lacking in my faith? What do I need to repent of? Do I need to remind myself that there is going to be a resurrection and this is not the end? Do I need to remind myself that God is going to judge me? And I don't want Him to judge me as an enemy. Mature Christians move on to maturity and they are earnest in their faith. They are earnest in their faith. They're serious about it. And they are ready to go, ready to fulfill their mission in Christ. Number four, mature Christians draw near to God. Mature Christians draw near to God. All of this, this whole section that we've been looking at, is one argument that the Hebrews writer is making. In Hebrews chapter 5, he starts making this point that To be a Christian means that you have a high priest, a connection between you and God that is greater than the high priest, the connection that you had under the law of Moses. Okay, So he's writing to these people who are wanting to go back to Judaism. And he's saying, look, you have a greater high priest than what you had in Judaism. You have a high priest who is after the order of Melchizedek. A funny name that we read in there. And I, we're not going to take the time to explain that, but basically he's saying, like, look, you have a high priest that, that can offer you a true and lasting and eternal connection with God. He has, has removed that division between man and God. You have that high priest. And so he says in Hebrews 7 and verse 25, he says that you need to draw near to God. He says it again in Hebrews chapter 10, draw near to God. Mature Christians realize, mature Christians realize that they need to draw near to God. C.S. Lewis has an illustration in his book, Mere Christianity, where he talks about this concept of drawing near to God. He says, if you want to get warm, you have to go near what? The fire. Okay. If you want to be wet, okay, if you want to cool off in the water, what do you got to do? You got to go draw near and get in the pool, right? If you want peace and love and joy and satisfaction, If you want to live the best life that you can possibly live, then you have to draw near to the thing that offers that. And that is God. And unfortunately, 
Unfortunately, whether it's conscious or not, we have this idea that everything, in the, that, that there are all these things in the world that are going to offer us that. They're going to offer us the peace that we want and the joy that we want. And so we draw near to those things. Oh, if I just make a whole bunch of money, that, I, it, it, that will just fix my life, that will fix my problems, and so I'm going to work, 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 work. And I'm going to be obsessed with it. And maybe we have to do that to get by. But then we've forgotten that we have to draw near to God. I, I, I think that, I think that, that, that the, the country that I live in is going to offer me peace and joy and happiness. And, 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 and so I am just going to throw myself into American politics. And I'm going to watch it on the news every day. And I'm going to be obsessed with it all the time. And, and, and my happiness depends on who gets elected. And so we draw near to that. And guess what? That's not who offers those things. And we forgot that we have to draw near to God. Mature Christians draw near to God. He is the one who has the answers. And, and Christ has made that possible for us. Christ has done that for us. He has removed the divisions for us. He has died for us. He has taken the punishment that we deserve and He's taken it upon Himself. He has become that sacrifice for us. The Lamb of God, as Calvin pointed out. Mature Christians draw near to God. And that means that we work on our relationship with God. We talk to God in prayer. We, we let God talk to us through reading His Word. We, uh, b we decide to be around people, the people of God. We, we come together when God's people come together, and we worship God when we can. When we can. And, and we do all of those things because we are a mature Christian, and we decide, I want to draw near to God because God is the one that has all of those things that I need, not these other things. Friends, I don't know about you, but I, I'm a person that because of my job, I have to, I, I pray and read the Bible every day. But even then, there have been times where I've gone entire days without even thinking about God. You know why? Because I've let other things get in the way. And sometimes I've got to go back to elementary. Sometimes I've got to go back to elementary and I've got to say, what, what am I missing here? What am I not understanding here? What am I not thinking about here? What, what's lacking in my faith? What's lacking in my repentance? What am I not taking seriously about the mission of God? Sometimes I've got to go back and look at that. But here's the deal. I don't want us to have to stay in elementary. I want us to move on to maturity. Mature Christians teach others. Mature Christians train themselves to discern, to discern good from evil. Mature Christians are earnest in their faith. We are on fire for God. And mature Christians draw near to God because they recognize God as the source of goodness and happiness, of peace and love. And we take that seriously. So, my question stands, have you finished elementary? And are you ready to move on to maturity? Let's all make the decision to graduate from milk to meat. I don't know about you, but I would be a very sad person if I could only consume milk. Because milk is gross, first of all. I don't like milk. Some of you like milk. I uh, had an elder or, or a, a member in a church one time that said, there's nothing better than a warm glass of milk, and that is the grossest thing I've ever heard in my life. I, I would throw up right now if I weren't in front of all of you. That, so gross. A warm, <laughs> so gross. Okay. I, I, I like meat. I want to move on to that. Let's not, let's not have to stick around and stay in those elementary principles. Let's move on. Let's grow in our relationship with God. I know many of you are doing that. I know many of you want to do that. But I want to offer this invitation to you. Maybe you haven't finished elementary. Maybe, maybe you don't have faith in God. Maybe you're struggling with that faith. Maybe, uh, maybe you don't believe that there will be an eternal, an eternal judgment. Maybe you haven't been baptized. Maybe 
you haven't taken seriously the mission of God that you received when someone laid their hands on you and baptized you into Christ. Maybe you want to sit down and talk about those things. This invitation is for you. But maybe you have done those things, but you have not taken seriously the call to move on to maturity, to grow up. We want to help you with that as well. We have a tradition here where we sing a song. It's called an invitation song to invite you to do something that you think you need to do. If, you need, if you'd like to ask for the prayers of the church, if you'd like to, to study further, if you uh, would just like the support of the church, whatever it is, we encourage you to come sit up here in one of these front pews and talk with us. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, one of our shepherds will be standing in the back. If you don't comfor- feel comfortable doing that, send me a text message, an email. Find me on Facebook if that's what you do. Reach out to me. I'd love to reach out to you. If you need something today, we want to help you. Won't you please come as we stand and as we sing?